Hello friends, you are all welcome to Human Bee. In the previous videos, we discussed the structure of radiocarpal and midcarpal joints. In this video, we are going to discuss the movements of risk complex, that is, the function of the risk complex. The movements of radiocarpal and midcarpal joints are caused by combination of active muscular and passive ligamentous and joint reaction forces. We all know the movements are mainly produced by muscles. But in risk complex, ligaments play a significant role. So the movements of radiocarpal and midcarpal joints are produced by muscular forces, ligamentous forces and joint reaction forces. The proximal carpal row acts as a mechanical link between radius and distal carpals. In this figure you can see that the proximal carpal row is the link between radius and distal carpal row. So it is a mechanical link between radius and distal carpal row. The proximal carpal row is otherwise known as intercalated segment. Intercalated segment means it is the middle segment of a three segment linkage. So here you can see three segments and the proximal carpal row act as a intercalated segment. When compressive forces are applied across the intercalated segment, the middle segment tend to collapse. In this figure you can see three segments. And if you are giving compressive forces across these three segments, you can see that the middle segment will collapse into opposite direction. The first and third segment will move to one direction and the middle segment will move to opposite direction. This is the tendency of intercalated segment. If you are applying compressive forces across the risk complex, the compressive forces are mainly produced by extensor forces. The proximal carpal row or you can say the scaffold collapse into flexion and distal carpal row move into extension. Or you can say like the scaffold move forwards or the distal carpal row move backwards. That means the intercalator segment require some stabilizing mechanism to prevent the collapse of the middle segment. So we already discussed if you are giving compressive forces, the middle segment will collapse into opposite direction. To stabilize this, the intercalator segment requires some stabilizing mechanism and it is provided by the wrist ligaments. When the carpals are axially loaded, when your wrist is placed in neutral position, there will be counter rotation within the proximal row itself. That means within the proximal carpal row between scaphoid, lunate and tracheotrum, there will be counter rotations. So all these movements should be prevented by some stabilizing mechanisms. The stabilizing mechanism is provided by ligamentous connections. Next we are moving to the axis of wrist joint motion. When we are describing a motion, we have to explain the axis of that particular motion. Head of the capitate referred as the keystone of the wrist. Here you can see the capitate and the capitate referred as the keystone of the wrist. It may serve as a location of the coronal axis for wrist extension and flexion and the anteroposterior axis for radial and ulnar deviation. We already discussed wrist is a biaxial joint. It has got two degrees of freedom and the motions are wrist flexion extension and radial and ulnar deviation. The axis of these motions are situated in capitate. Next we will discuss the flexion and extension of the wrist. The flexion and extension occurs in coronal axis and when we are discussing the sequences of events from full flexion to extension there are mainly three sequences. First one is Distal carpal row move on fixed proximal carpal row. Second one is scaffold and distal carpal row move on fixed proximal carpal row. Third one is distal and proximal carpal row move on fixed radius and triangular fibrocartilage complex. Let's discuss these events. First one is distal carpal row move on fixed proximal carpal row. The active extension is initiated in the distal carpal row and attached metacarpals. 
we all know the extensor muscles are attached to this bone especially in the metacarpals so the active extension is initiated in the distal carpal row and attached metacarpals so what happens is the distal carpals glide on relatively fixed proximal carpal bones so your distal carpals glide on fixed proximal carpal row in the neutral position the ligament between capitate and scaphoid tightens and brings them in close pack position we are discussing the events from full flexion to extension so when the wrist reaches in neutral position the ligament between capitate and scaphoid that means the ligament connecting distal carpal and proximal carpal the ligament connecting capitate and scaphoid tightens and brings them in close pack position in this figure you can see that the blue colored shaded part is moving so the metacarpals and distal carpal is moving on fixed proximal carpal row the second event is scaphoid and distal carpal row move on fixed proximal carpal row we already discussed in the neutral position the ligament between capitate and scaphoid tightens so in the continued extension there will be combined movement of distal carpal row and scaphoid on relatively fixed lunate and trochanter so your distal carpal row and scaphoid move on fixed lunate and trochanter at 45 degree of extension the ligament between scaphoid and lunate tightens and brings the scaphoid and lunate into close pack position so when your wrist reaches in 45 degree of extension the ligament connecting scaphoid and lunate the ligament connecting two proximal carpal bones tightens and brings the scaphoid and lunate into close pack position here we are showing the second event that is the metacarpal distal carpal row and scaphoid move as a combined unit on relatively fixed trochanter and radius in this figure the blue colored part is moving that is metacarpal distal carpal row and scaphoid move on relatively fixed lunate and trochanter next is the third event that is distal and proximal carpal row move on fixed radius and triangular fibrocartilage complex we already discussed at approximately 45 degree of extension the ligament between scaphoid and lunate tightens and brings them in close pack position so the completion of wrist complex extension occurs as the carpal move as a solid unit that is the proximal carpal row and distal carpal row move as a solid unit on radius and triangular fibrocartilage complex all the ligaments become taut as full extension is reached and the entire wrist complex is close packed in full extension so in the full extension all the ligaments tightens and the wrist complex is close packed in this figure we are showing the third event that is the metacarpal distal carpal and proximal carpal row move on fixed radius and tfcc here the blue colored part is moving so you can see the metacarpal distal carpal row and proximal carpal row move on fixed radius and triangular fibrocartilage complex in this figure we can see all the three sequences the first event is the distal carpal row move on relatively fixed proximal carpal row and just before the second event the ligament between capitate and scaphoid tightens and brings them in close pack position so in the second event the distal carpal and scaphoid move as a combined unit on relatively fixed lunate and trochanter just before the third event the ligament between scaphoid and lunate tightens and in the third event all the carpals move as a solid unit on fixed radius and tfcc so these are the sequences of events full extension to full flexion occurs in reverse sequence and we can see that wrist ligaments plays a significant role in the motion of wrist complex next we are moving to radial and ulnar deviation of the wrist 
റേഡിയൽ ആൻഡ് അൾണ ഡീവിയേഷൻ ഒക്കേഴ്സ് എറൌണ്ട് ആൻഡ് ആൻഡ്രോ പോസ്റ്റീരിയർ ആക്സസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് മോർ കോംപ്ലെക്സ് ഇൻ റേഡിയൽ ഡീവിയേഷൻ ദ കാർപ്പൽ സ്ലൈഡ് അൾണാർലി ഓൺ ദ റേഡിയസ് ആൻഡ് ദർ വിൽ ബി സൈമൾട്ടേനിയസ് ഫ്ലെക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ പ്രോക്സിമൽ കാർപ്പൽസ് ആൻഡ് എക്സ്റ്റൻഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ഡിസ്റ്റൽ കാർപ്പൽസ് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ഇൻ റേഡിയൽ ഡീവിയേഷൻ ദ കാർപ്പൽ സ്ലൈഡ് അൾണാർലി ആൻഡ് ദർ വിൽ ബി ഫ്ലെക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ പ്രോക്സിമൽ കാർപ്പൽസ് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ദർ വിൽ ബി ഫോർവേഡ് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ പ്രോക്സിമൽ കാർപ്പൽസ് ആൻഡ് എക്സ്റ്റൻഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ഡിസ്റ്റൽ കാർപ്പൽസ് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ദ ഡിസ്റ്റൽ കാർപ്പൽ മൂവ്സ് ബാക്ക്വേഡ് ഓപ്പോസിറ്റ് മോഷൻസ് ഓഫ് പ്രോക്സിമൽ ആൻഡ് ഡിസ്റ്റൽ കാർപ്പൽസ് ഒക്കേഴ്സ് വിത്ത് അൾണ ഡീവിയേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ദ റേഞ്ച് ഓഫ് അൾണാർ ആൻഡ് റേഡിയോ ഡീവിയേഷൻ ആർ ഗ്രേറ്റസ്റ്റ് വെൻ ദ റിസ്റ്റ് ഈസ് പ്ലേസ്ഡ് ഇൻ ന്യൂട്രൽ പൊസിഷൻ ഇൻ ദിസ് ഫിഗർ വി ക്യാൻ സി ഇൻ റേഡിയോ ഡീവിയേഷൻ ദ കാർപ്പൽ സ്ലൈഡ് അൾണാർലി ആൻഡ് ദർ വിൽ ബി ഫ്ലെക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ പ്രോക്സിമൽ കാർപ്പൽസ് ആൻഡ് ദർ വിൽ ബി എക്സ്റ്റൻഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ഡിസ്റ്റൽ കാർപ്പൽസ് വി ഓൾറെഡി ഡിസ്കസ്ഡ് we get maximum range of radial and ulna deviation while the wrist is in neutral position when the wrist is extended that is the in close back position all the carpels are locked so further movement is not possible in wrist flexion the joints are loose packed and the bones are splayed that means the bones are spread and further movement of proximal carpal row cannot occur so we get maximum range of radial and ulnar deviation while the wrist is placed in neutral position next we are going to discuss about optimal functional position of the wrist wrist extension and ulnar deviation are most important for wrist activities optimal functional position of wrist means it is approximately 20 degree extension and 10 degree of ulna deviation in arthrodesis arthrodesis means it is a permanent fusion of the joint that is done surgically the surgeon usually prefers this optimal functional position that is 20 degree extension and 10 degree ulna deviation because we already discussed wrist extension and ulna deviation is important for almost all wrist activities thank you next video we will discuss about wrist instability if you have any doubt please put your comments in the comment box and thank you so much